One of the world's most ambitious construction projects is being built in the middle of a desert. The Gulf Cooperation Council, made up of six of the Middle East's wealthiest countries, is constructing a more than 2,000-kilometer railway to better connect the region, with desert sands to cross and mountains to tunnel through. The project's challenges are immense and matched only by the price tag that comes with tackling them. The railway has the potential to unite the Gulf, reshape its transportation sector, reduce its carbon footprint, and kickstart a whole new era of economic development. But first, it has to overcome the political, financial, and logistical challenges standing in its way. The GCC approved a massive railway project that would link all six member states, with the entire project estimated to be between $100-$250 billion. The railway lines will help connect the nation's ports with manufacturing hubs, that will connect the nation's ports with urban centers. A key element of the network is Etihad Railway and $11 billion, one 200-kilometer freight and passenger railway stretching across the Emirates from the Gulf of Oman to the Persian Gulf. A key element of the network is Etihad Railway and $11 billion, one 200-kilometer freight and passenger railway stretching across the Emirates from the Gulf of Oman to the Persian Gulf. The UAE's first national rail network is being constructed in two stages. The first stage was completed in 2016 and spans 264 kilometers from the Habshan and Shah areas in Abu Dhabi to the port of Ruwais. In Stage 1, Etihad Rail constructed 20 overbridges, 2 underbridges, 10 road underpasses, and 18 smaller underpasses for future use. The company also built two factories to produce concrete railway sleepers made from locally sourced raw materials, which form the base of the tracks. Each sleeper is 26 meters long and weighs 340 kilograms. They're attached to the main rails with a fastening system and are used to help stabilize the track and ensure the train can travel smoothly at speeds of up to 200 kilometers an hour for passenger trains. But this first route isn't transporting passengers just yet. Rather, it's carrying up to 22,000 tons of granulated sulfur across 110 wagons each day. The element is extracted from the oil fields in Abu Dhabi and processed for export at the port of Ruwais. Stage 2 construction began in 2020 and will extend the network 605 kilometers from Guwayfat on the border, with Saudi Arabia to Fujairah on the east coast. Once complete, the network will link the country's major industrial ports and trading centers, enabling more than 50 million tons of goods to be transported across the network each year. Saudi Arabia and the UAE have potential for the development of other natural resources too like iron ore, gold, aluminium, and silver. A strong railway infrastructure would help them and would help these governments tap this so far and tap natural resources. Even with progress being made on the Etihad Rail Network, the GCC Rail Project as a whole hasn't always gone according to plan. The pandemic and oil prices have caused logistical delays and cuts to infrastructure spending which have pushed the completion date back by years. Still, the railway is a big part of Gulf nations' plans to become more sustainable and diversify their economies. It's given rise to a new industry, which means new jobs. Both Saudi Arabia and the Emirates have developed rail studies training programs. The Emirates may be known for its oil wealth and glitzy futuristic developments. But Etihad Railway is a glimpse into leaders' long-term strategy to build a more connected, unified gulf. In your opinion, will the railway in the desert be successful? Share your opinion with us in the comments. And here we come to the end of the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Oklahoma City is particularly attractive thanks to its low unemployment rate rising wages, booming construction, and growing population. A 533-meter supertall designed by Al may be coming to Oklahoma City, marking the country's second tallest building.
Developer has revealed plans to build a whopping 533-meter supertall smack dab in the middle of Oklahoma City. If built, Madison's ambitious Oklahoma City Tower would be second only to the 533-meter tall Freedom Tower in Lower Manhattan as the country's tallest building. Design shows three separate towers perched above the new stadium that functions as a podium, encompassing a new mixed-use complex. The California real estate magnate has dubbed the boardwalk at Bricktown. These more squat buildings would tentatively have parking garages, retail space, 576 market-rate homes, 48 affordable homes, and 140 units of workforce housing and a workforce development center. The skyscraper designed by California office is mostly residential, fitted with one 528 units. The current 134-story iteration also features restaurants, shops, and a 480-room Hyatt Dream Hotel, alongside 85 condos. At the foot of the Supertall would be a new $900 million stadium for the Oklahoma City Thunder a project that was approved by the City Council on December 12. The new arena will replace the Cox Convention Center, where the Thunder currently play across the street. The Megaproject's total building area is 35 million square feet spread across four acres. Renderings also reveal a 17,000-square-foot lagoon on site and a 57,000-square-foot podium rooftop crowning the forthcoming basketball arena. So far, the Oklahoma City Council has approved $200 million in tax increment financing to support the venture. Under the current deal, the $200 million would be paid after the apartments are completed. The design, however, is still in the planning phase and hasn't been submitted for approval to the city planning department. From afar, the Oklahoma City Supertall would loom over its relatively flat environs like Frank Lloyd Wright's unbuilt mile. Lloyd Wright's is high skyscraper in Illinois, proposed in 1956. The tallest building in Oklahoma City today is the Devon Energy Center, a 50-story, 844-foot corporate skyscraper. Renders show that Madison's super tall tapers as it goes up, and an iridescent light source at its crown pierces the night sky. But why is the tower so tall? Why was it built in Oklahoma City? Answer our question in the comments. Share your opinion with us in the comments. And here we come to the end of the video. Don't forget to share the video and subscribe to the channel.